I can see the future. Oh, what the hell? She didn't see that coming? That's <laughs> not how it works. If Madam Web was a file, I would delete it. <laughs> Oh man, this movie is so terrible that even my 8 year old nephew could write better than this. Now if you don't know me, I watch movies at 0.2 fabric speed and try to find hidden details and easter eggs for a living. This is how it basically looks when I watch a film for a YouTube video. Even this process is more enjoyable than enduring Madame Web in theaters. So this movie kicks off in 1973 by showing us how Cassandra Webb or Madame Web is born. Where we see Cassandra's mother is in the Amazon forest trying to find a special spider that gives power to anyone it bites. Now how does she know this? We don't know. Now as soon as she finds the spider she was looking for, she gets betrayed by her bodyguard aka the main villain of this movie. Now this generic villain just shoots the other bodyguards without thinking once. Hell she just found the spider, gave her a few minutes and he was literally offering her to run away and save her life because all he wants is a spider? But if that's the case, why did he need to kill these two guards then? If you could kill two, you can kill three. Just kill all of them and get the f out of here. Anyway, then the local spider people tried their best to save her with the spider venom but couldn't. But they did manage to save Cassandra, the newborn, who of course is born with powers because her mother got bit by a spider. But this power in her is not triggered until she drowns at the age of 30. Why? We don't know. Cut to 2003 in New York, we see an adult Cassandra who works as a paramedic. Now, how did a newborn get to the states from the Peruvian forest? I guess we'll never know. Now she's a paramedic who actually doesn't like saving people. Why? Again, we, we don't know. So one day she's off to attend some emergencies and tries to save somebody but the car ends up in the water and she starts drowning. And that's when her powers get activated and she can basically see the future from now on. So no villains can defeat her, right? Because she can see the future? Um, not exactly. Because she only gets glimpses of the future when someone is on the brink of death. Why? We don't know. Actually, we do know this time. Ha, huh, you thought the writers are so stupid, eh? That they're gonna leave everything unexplained? I'm pretty sure the writers give a very prominent reason as to why she only gets glimpses of the future when someone is nearing their demise. Um, yeah, so she can't see the future all the time because uh, she can control it. <laughs> That's not cliche at all. Anyway, so our generic villain guy sees the same vision over and over again where three spider women toss him out of the window and kills him. So he makes it his life's mission to kill this three spider women before they take away everything he built. And what did he build exactly? Again, that's right. Apparently he has some sort of an empire or something and still can afford lights for his apartment because villains means darkness I guess as we learned in grade one. Anyway, we never see how he made his empire or what exactly exactly does it mean by an empire? Now to find the three spider women he sees in his vision, he uses a tech that can scan his brain and find the people from his imagination in the real world. Oh yeah, definitely. Sounds like 2003, eh? But that kind of technology is only available to the National Security Agency. So what does he do to get it? I mean, it must be so difficult, eh? Simple, he f***s a woman who works for the NSA and gets it. Um, actually not that simple because he f***s her, yes, but then kills her and then gets it. So according to Madam Web writers, you could just persuade any NSA agent if you're good looking. Anyway, Madam Web starts seeing visions of her own where she sees these three teenage girls getting killed by our friendly neighborhood villain. And of course she prevents it because she already saw it. Now to take these girls to a safe spot, Cassandra takes them to the woods because there's no cameras there. Now what's interesting is that only we as the audience know that the puny villain has access to cameras all over the city. Cassandra still doesn't know it and yet she decides the woods is the only safe place for these three teenage girls. She then leaves them for three hours all alone in the woods and comes back after dark. Because come on, when is the woods the safest? At night time when they're all alone. So Madam Web then figures out that her punky villain is actually the same guy who went on the same mission with her mother. And over here in the woods, the girls decide to go to a diner because they are, and I quote, starving. Cassandra gets another glimpse into the future where she sees our punkest villain killing the three spider woman. And then Cassandra prevents it from happening by ramming our villain from behind with a taxi. Now I've mentioned three times already that the villain is after the three spider woman. But do you still care if they live or die? Has the movie given you a single chance to develop any sort of connection with these three characters? Then they all get to a motel where Cassandra tries her best to get rid of the girls and dump them to their parents. Because as I said, she has all the characteristics of a good paramedic. Uh, anyway, then the girls point out 
out that they're basically alone in this world and their parents have essentially abandoned them. Hearing this, Sidney Sweeney's character, aka Julia, asks Isabella's character, Anya, Oh, you're on your own? And this is what Anya replies, and I quote, I don't need anyone else to look out for me. Bitch, you just got saved twice by Madam Webb from getting killed. Who the f writes these dialogues. I understand you're trying to portray them as girl bosses, but look at the dialogues you're writing. They're not even matching with the character they're playing. Anyway, Cassandra then teaches the girls how to perform CPR, because our dog shit villain can release a toxin from his hands that can give you a cardiac arrest. So just in case you're in a hand-to-hand -hand combat with this dude, if you know how to do CPR, you may just survive. <laughs> Now let me tell you what happened here, okay? The writers wrote the ending of this movie where Madame Webb needs CPR to survive and the girls perform the CPR. But then one of the writers went, but how do we teach the girls how to perform CPR? And they were like, wait a second, Madame Webb will just bring up the toxin thing and teach them. <laughs> My goodness. And oh, Madame Webb also taught them that if you get tired doing CPR, you should just switch over to the next person. So when Madame Webb's life was actually at stake at the end and Anya was performing CPR on her, believe me, she just did it for 10 seconds and said, I think I'm getting a little tired. Bitch, you're getting tired doing CPR on someone who literally saved your life five times? Your adrenaline at the time should boost your abilities. Therefore, you shouldn't feel tired so quickly. I understand Madame Webb teaching the CPR is a bit of a foreshadowing that this might come in handy later, but why does the switching thing have to be involved as well? Just because she said it doesn't mean you have to do it. That's just school level writing, lads. This is so bad that I'm not even sure if the writers intended it to be a comic book movie or a comedy movie. And if you think you've seen the worst, wait a second. Because our friendly neighborhood punk as villain literally kills himself because he happens to be in a position where a giant pee from a Pepsi billboard falls over him. This movie had zero action scenes. Whatever actions we see are from the visions that they have. So by preventing the future, they're preventing the action from taking place. So Cassandra asks Ben, aka Uncle Ben, to help her shelter these three girls. So he comes over to the motel and picks the girls up and takes them home. But never gets caught by the CCTV cameras all over the city, which the villain has access to. Why? Because if they get caught now, then we can't have Madame Webb, who's currently a fugitive, embark on a journey to the Peruvian forest to uncover the truth about her origin and her mother. So we need to keep the girl safe for a week. Now the police is nowhere to be seen in this universe. I mean our beardless villain kills an NSA agent and nothing happens. Madame Webb, who's accused of kidnapping three teenage girls, can freely fly off to Peru and return within the week. So airport security in 2003 wasn't that tough in the US I guess? Ugh. Now during all this, Mary Parker, Uncle Ben's sister-in-law, goes into labor. Because why not? And as Common Sense says, the girl should stay at home Home, as this has definitely been working so far, and Uncle Ben should just take Mary Parker to the hospital alone. However, in this movie's mission to defy all common sense, Uncle Ben inexplicably decides to bring along all three girls on the trip to the hospital. The movie never explains why Uncle Ben felt the need to take the three girls with him. It's not like Mary Parker couldn't walk or needed help. She literally walked by herself to the car. So what was the point behind taking all three of them and risk getting picked up by cameras? Anyone know how they got caught? Because one of the girls stares directly at a CCTV camera. They all have their hoodies on and one of them even says, keep your head down. But she just decides to look directly at a camera so the villain can get her precise location. And this reminds me, when the villain got the technology from NSA, which can extract faces from his dreams, his assistant used another piece of tech to anticipate how these three faces would look if they were 10 years younger. Okay, I get that. You could do that with a filter. But wait, Sydney Sweeney Spider-Woman sports a hairstyle, purred it from right to left in her superhero form. But after making them look younger and removing their masks, her hair is now magically parted in the middle, just like she looks in the movie. And the same goes for Maddie's hair too. Her older version has a huge afro, but the younger rendition not only has less hair, but the hairline is different altogether. So please tell me in what universe the NSA had tech like this in the year 2003. On one hand, we're led to believe it's just 2003, hence Madame Webb, a fugitive, can freely enter and exit the USA. Yet on the other hand, we're presented with tech that seems light years ahead of anything conceivable even in 2024. These are the writers who wrote this movie. You know what else they wrote? Morbius. But Morbius was more entertaining than whatever the pile of crap this is. You know how I think they write movies? This is what they do. There's a fish in the water, but I need that fish on the moon. So guess what? The fish in my movie can fly now. But I also need that fish to go blind by the end. So once the fish reaches the moon, its flying powers won't work. So it will get blasted in its eye and lose its eyesight. Now does it 
it make sense to you from any angle? This is what they've essentially done with Madame Web. Every single character is literally a plot point just to get to the ending where Madame Web gets blinded just like in the comics. So much for seeing the future, eh? Now if they had stuck to what we've read in the comics, it would still be a far better movie than what we've got now. Madame Web in the comics was born blind, and due to an autoimmune disease, she lost her ability to move like a normal human. Therefore, her husband Jonathan made her a chair that can help her navigate and move around with the power of her mind. But we can't do that, can we? Because the husband is a male, and we're supposed to write a female-led story, right? It's not a female-led story, it's a misleading story. The trailer was misleading, the whole movie is a mess, and the writing is just shambles. Now here's my message to Marvel. If Sony is gonna keep on making movies like these using Spider-Man characters, not only will Sony lose credibility, but Marvel as well. Because at least 30-40% to of general audiences still don't know that the Sony Spider-Man universe and the MCU Spider-Man universe are different. Plus, a movie like this sends a negative message across the board regarding comic book movies. So Sony, I beg you, please stop hiring shitty writers who write shitty movies. Bye now.